Hashtag Michigan did you know? Lake Huron was home to a 9,000 year old civilization, underwater structures and artifacts reveal. By Connie Waters, ancientpages.com as ancientpages.com reported in 2014, while exploring Lake Huron, one of the five great lakes of North America, underwater archaeologists found traces of an ancient lost civilization twice as old as Stonehenge and the Great Pyramids of Egypt. Scientists were thrilled when U.S. radar suddenly detected an odd structure at the bottom of Lake Huron. This was the first piece of a puzzle that led to a 9,000-year-old discovery. Underwater Exploration of Lake Huron Credit, the University of Texas at Arlington O'Shea, a professor of anthropology at the University of Michigan, noticed the peculiarity and, through a leap of innovative thinking concluded that the structure was perfect for caribou hunting corridors. He then assembled a team to explore the ridge and what he found was groundbreaking. As it was reported underwater archaeologists have seemingly found what was once a dry land corridor connecting northeast Michigan and southern Ontario. Scientists say the main feature, dubbed the Drop 45 Drive Lane, is the most complex hunting structure found beneath the Great Lakes to date. The 9,000-year-old limestone structure is comprised of two parallel lines of stones that lead to a cul-de-sac lined with natural cobble. If the findings are correct, it would make the hunting complex twice as old as Stonehenge. After many years, there is now more news on the ancient underwater site in Michigan. In a recent study, underwater archaeologists from the University of Texas at Arlington have confirmed the 9,000-year-old stone tool artifacts discovered in Lake Huron originated from an obsidian quarry more than 2,000 miles away in central Oregon. The obsidian flakes from the underwater archaeological site represent the oldest and farthest east confirmed specimens of western obsidian ever found in the continental United States. In this case, these tiny obsidian artifacts reveal social connections across North America 9,000 years ago, said Ashley Lemke, assistant professor of sociology and anthropology at UT Arlington. The artifacts found below the Great Lakes come from a geological source in Oregon, 4,000 kilometers away, making it one of the longest distances recorded for obsidian artifacts anywhere in the world. Because the site was underwater and undisturbed, Researchers systematically and scientifically recovered the obsidian, a form of volcanic glass that was used and traded widely throughout much of human history as a prized material for making sharp tools. There is still much to learn about Lake Huron's ancient structures. Credit to Tang Casserly. These are very small pieces that have very large stories to tell, Lemke said. Obsidian from the far western United States is rarely found in the east. The find in Lake Huron is part of a broader study to understand caribou hunters' social and economic organization at the end of the last ice age. Water levels were much lower then, scientists have found. For example, ancient sites like stone walls and hunting blinds that are now 100 feet underwater. See also, more archaeology news. We've been working on the Alpena Amberley Ridge under Lake Huron. Uh, looking at potential ancient hunting sites and what we found this summer was about a five and a half foot length of wood that was preserved on the on the lake bottom that turns out to, to have a radiocarbon date of about 8,900 years ago. It's important because first of all it gives us a, a date for when this this feature that's over 100 feet underwater was dry land and it also gives us confidence that the way the water came back up over the ridge was sufficiently gentle that archaeological remains and, and natural features like pieces of wood were actually preserved in place on the landscape. So this increases the likelihood that we're going to find this almost Pompeii-like situation of artifacts and stone constructions left pretty much the way people left them. The, the segment of wood is about five and a half feet long at one end, it's, it's maybe five inches in diameter, a little less, and it, and it comes down to a beveled point. And it was that beveling on the point and in the front part of it that initially caught our eye. And uh, so everyone was really excited when we saw it. And this would, of course, be the time when basically we ran out of inverter power and the lights went out on the ROV. So in fact, the divers had to follow the cable of the ROV to actually get and recover the specimen. 
And it was, it was a little eerie. I mean, it was sort of like something out of a science fiction where you pick up this staff off the bottom and, and swim to the surface with this, this uh, the staff of Gandalf or something. So on the one hand, you're really excited when you find something like this. And on the other hand, the scientist is saying, you know, be skeptical, be skeptical, be skeptical. And that's, that's the balance we keep trying to, trying to maintain with all this research. Hopefully we'll find out whether there's evidence of active human modification, and that modification would tell us something really important about the kinds of structures people were building. It more gives you an idea about the, the kind of environment that these early hunters would have been living in, uh, something about the kind of wood that's available. Depending on the identification of the wood, we may be able to argue that it, it was brought there from, from the south by the hunters, which would also be an interesting twist to the story. The actual hunting structures aren't likely to have a lot of artifacts because the hunters like to keep it clean so it doesn't spook the animals. So what, what, we, what we're trying to model, and we're using Bob Reynolds' simulation to do this now, is where the campsite would be relative to the hunting structures because we can find the hunting structures pretty easily. And then if, if we can find those, then, then we can find the artifacts. Uh, we can find animal bone, which, which doesn't survive on land because the soils are so acid. Um, you get all the seasonal data. You, I mean, you, you really get, I mean, that's really where you, where you find the data you really need to answer your questions.